Thank you for your purchase of a U-Harvest data management system. This video is going to demonstrate how to operate U-Harvest from a tablet. By now your tablet should be connected and have U-Harvest pulled up on the screen. If you are not connected and don't have U-Harvest pulled up on the screen, please see the U-Harvest tablet connection and setup video. From the home screen, we can start new jobs, resume old jobs, or resume the latest job. We will first start a new job. Click on the blue plus sign where it says new job. This brings us to the page where you entered all your growers, farms, and fields. Click on the grower drop down menu and choose which grower you are going to do. Next, click on the farm drop down menu and choose which farm you are going to. Next, click on the field drop down menu and choose which field you are going to. Finally, choose which crop you will be harvesting. Once all those have been selected, you can click on the green play button in the bottom right corner to start the new job. Once you have started the job, it brings you right to the scale page. This is the page most commonly used when operating in the field. At the top of the screen, you will see what field you are in because it gives you grower, farm, and field. It also shows you what year and crop. This information will stay at the top of the screen no matter what page you are on. So right in the middle of the screen is where we will find the cart weight. Left of the weight is where you can zero the cart out. If you know the cart is completely empty and it doesn't show exactly zero, but this weight is not important because every time you turn the PTO on, the scale automatically zeroes itself out. If you tap on the weight box, the system will switch from load weight to combine verify. Here's where you can zero the combine verify out and dump the combine on the cart so you can calibrate your combine yield monitor but still keeping your load weight. If you click back on the weight, it will go back to the load weight. To the right of the weight, you can click between weight and bushels depending on what you want to display. Underneath the weight, we have two status bars. One is for the hitch weight and one is for the total capacity. The hitch weight is important because every grain cart has a loading procedure, which is load the center of the cart right above the axles first, then the rear of the cart, and then finally the front. But if the front is loaded out of sequence, the grain cart operator will be able to see this on the screen. The total capacity just shows a percentage of how much of the cart is loaded based on the capacity set during the setup procedure. Next we will see a mini report on the scale page. It shows load ID number, weight of the load, truck ID, and moisture of the load if a moisture sensor is equipped, and the test weight of the grain. And finally, on the bottom right, you will see the totals from the current field you're in. You can see the total weight for the field and total dry bushels for the field. So we will simulate loading the grain cart and unloading the grain cart. Now that we have a full grain cart, we are ready to unload. When you are ready to unload the grain cart, you can click on the unload button at the bottom of the screen, third from the right. On the unload page, you will see the last unloaded weight in the unloaded weight box. Our show is zero because this is the first load we are dumping for the field. You will see the two status bars underneath the weight. To the left of the unload weight, you will see the grain cart spout. When the PTO is on, grain will be coming out of the spout. Then if you look to the right of the unload weight, you will see a truck. When the PTO is on, grain will be coming onto the truck. So it is a good practice to check those two things when you turn your PTO on. This ensures that the system knows it should be recording now because we are unloading. But before you turn the PTO on, you want to change any destination, variety, or truck information that is not correct. Do this before the PTO is turned on because once the PTO is on, do not touch any information on the screen. If you do happen to have something wrong and the PTO is on, do not worry. From a tablet, you can edit any information after the load is recorded, which we will show you later. So at the bottom of the screen, you can click on the drop down menu for the destination and choose wherever the grain is going. If the variety is different from what is chosen, then click on the drop down menu and choose whichever variety you have. 
Last, you can choose whichever truck is hauling this load of grain from the drop down menu for truck. If you have AccuLoad, the bottom right is where you can make sure it is in auto mode, but for more details, please see the U-Harvest Operator's Manual. Since you have chosen your destination, variety, and truck, you're ready to unload. So with the tractor at idle, you can go ahead and engage your PTO. Now you can see grain coming out of the grain cart spout on the left side of the screen and grain going onto the truck on the right side of the screen. This means you are in an unloading sequence and the system is recording. Also, the unload weight zeroed as soon as the PTO was engaged. You can now go ahead and unload the grain cart. As you unload the grain cart, you will notice the weight in the unloading box starts to climb as you unload more grain. So when the truck is full and you disengage the PTO, do not move the cart until the PTO stops spinning and the weight is recorded. Moving too soon before the weight is recorded will make the weights inaccurate. You have unloaded your first load and you can go back to the scale page and see the load you just dumped. As I mentioned earlier, if you have chosen the wrong destination, variety, or truck, you can change that now. You will see a blue box around the load number. If you click on the load ID, it will bring up the load editor menu. Here you can change the destination, truck, or variety if you need to. You can also enter a note if you choose. For example, it's best to calibrate the scale on the first three to five loads for most accurate records. So the truck driver radioed back and said the load he hauled was 53,560. So I will enter that as a note on load ID number one and click the green check mark to accept it. As I mentioned earlier, it's best to calibrate the scale as soon as possible. It works best to use three to five loads to calibrate the scale. It also works best to take the loads to a certified scale to get the best accuracy. For the demonstration here, I've ran five loads. So if I add up my five cart weight records, I come up with an average of 61,370 pounds. If I add up all my certified scale weight records, I come up with an average of 63,700 pounds. So now you can click on the setup tab in the bottom left corner. You can enter the averaged certified weight in the certified weight box. So I will enter 63,700. You can enter the average grain cart weight in the grain cart weight box. 61,000 370. Once these two numbers are entered, you will see two cal numbers. You will see the current cal number and the new cal number. Right now, these two numbers are different. You will need to press the big calibrate button in order to calibrate the system. Once you press the calibrate button, the two numbers will now be the same. This means the system has changed the calibration number to make the scale accurate. It doesn't hurt to check a few more loads just to make sure the grain cart is accurate. Remember, grain cart scales do have a 1% error because it is a mobile scale. Calibrating the moisture sensor is done the exact same way. Click on the water droplet and this brings you to the moisture calibration page. We have certified moisture, load moisture, old offset, and new offset. Enter the average certified moisture for the loads and enter the average load moisture for the loads. Once these two are entered, the off old offset and the new offset will be different just like the scale weight. And once you hit calibrate, both offsets will be the same. This ensures that the moisture sensor is now calibrated. Now that your grain cart scale weight and moisture sensor are calibrated and you are using the scale page and unload page, if you would like to see all the data from this field, you can click on the report tab at the bottom of the screen, which is a second from the right. Here you can view all your information for every load. Next you can click on the diagnostics tab. This menu has four important numbers that are needed if you ever call your dealer for troubleshooting. ECU firmware version, processor firmware version, Hitch voltage and axle voltage are the most important numbers for troubleshooting. 
There are more troubleshooting tips in the operator's manual and on uharvest.net. On the home screen is where we can resume old jobs. If we want to go to the most recent job we are in, we can click on the last job button which is always at the top middle of the screen. This will go back to the most recent job we are in if we happen to shut down the uHarvest system. If we want to go back to a previous job, we can use the job search filter. This, search, this filters by year, by our growers, by our farms, and then also by our fields. You are now able to run uHarvest data management system to its fullest capacity using a tablet. If you would like to run uHarvest from a virtual terminal screen, please see uHarvest VT operations video. Please see uHarvest data download video to see how to download your uHarvest data.